My name is DJ Swivel, and I want to show you guys four unique ways that you can use the sauce in one of your productions. Come check it out. So this is a song that I wrote uh, just recently, and there's four unique ways that I'm using the sauce in this song. So let me show you uh, the four ways I'm using it. Uh, the first way I'm using it is here on this chorus. Uh, this is a stack of 12 chorus vocals. Uh, four of them are me singing for a low octave, and eight of them are a frequent collaborator of mine, Candace Sosa. It's her voice. Now, I could have just mixed these vocals and, and left it as is, and it would have been cool, uh, but this song has a nostalgic vibe to it. And so I wanted this chorus to feel like it was kids singing. Like, you know, you were looking back in, in time and, and the, the voice is, is your childhood voice. And so I wanted to create this like children's choir sound. So let me play you the chorus uh, with uh, uh, no sauce on it uh, and no uh, reverb or delay or anything like that. Just so you can see what the chorus is doing. Here we go. Damn it, I wish I, God damn it, I wish I, I wish I had a sign to say we were living, we were living, we were living in the good old days. Damn. Okay, so that's the chorus. Now, I want to create this um, childlike effect. So I pull up the sauce, and all I'm doing uh, is shifting the formant uh, up 3.8, and here's what it sounds like. That's literally the only thing that I'm doing. And then once we add effects, uh, it sounds quite cool. Here we go. And now let me play it in context with the whole beat. see very quickly and very easily you can get a really cool effect that just makes your track stand out stand out a little bit more than the next person's and to me that's what music is about is finding unique ways uh, to get your message across so that's the first way I'm using uh, the sauce in the song uh, let me show you the second way so here in this second verse section um, I have these background vocals that are just doubling the lead and what I've done is I've got an instance of the sauce on an effects return, which we'll move up here. And uh, this is just an effects return. And what I've got going on is I have the reverb at 100%, which makes it essentially act like a, a reverb. It's a 100% wet reverb signal. I have a little bit of delay, um, a little bit of compression, uh, and I have a little bit of distortion, and I've pitched it up a full octave. And so what you're going to get is this high pitch uh, reverb sound. So let me uh, just play these background vocals and, and play what they're doing. Go back. Soundtrack. Crazy. Lately. So you can see on the first two, we had no effect. On the second two, uh, we had this high pitch reverb effect. Um, and that's all we're doing is, is we've got the reverb uh, set to 100, we have it pitched up, we have a couple other effects going on there, and we're just automating uh, the send right here. Uh, so this is the automation, and we're just bypassing the mute, and, um, and then you get that, and it's a nice sounding effect to just make one section of this second verse just sound a little different. So let me play it for you in, in uh, context. I just want to go back Panic at the disco at the soundtrack Hit me all at once, it's crazy It's the bright side, not lately Got everything I dreamed, thought maybe So here's the third way that I'm using the sauce on this song. Uh, it actually happens right after the previous way I was showing you. Um, and what we're trying to create here is a low octave um, what happened was I recorded the vocal and when I started mixing the song later, I realized that I wanted a low octave vocal uh, to double uh, what Candace was doing on her lead 
uh, for these last couple bars of the second verse. So what I simply did was I, I duplicated this lead vocal track and it's got all your normal vocal effects to get a nice lead vocal. Um, but then the last effect uh, that I have on this is the sauce. And here we have it. And what I've done is I've lowered the pitch by a full octave and I've lowered the formant a little bit just to shape the vocal. Uh, there's a bit of dist or uh, a bit of compression rather. Uh, and then I have the spread set to 80%. So it's nice and wide and it sounds like a stereo vocal, like you have a left and right vocal. And so uh, here's what this vocal sounds like without the sauce on it. If I had it all, it would save me. Now it's the memories I'm craving. Right, simple lead vocal. And here's it with the sauce. If I had it all, it would save me. Now it's the memories I'm craving. Sounds great. And now let's hear it in context so you understand why I made that, that creative decision and, and what the purpose was uh, in the song. So we'll roll back from a few bars. So very cool. Now you have a low octave there. It makes that, that end of the verse just lifts the energy a little bit. Um, and it's a really useful uh, tool uh, when you're trying to do vocal production on a, on a pop record like this. So here is the fourth way that I'm using the sauce on this track. Uh, and in this case, I'm actually using it on the synth instead of the vocal. I know we call it a vocal seasoner, but the sauce actually sounds great on drums, bass, synths, you know, I, I encourage you to try it on everything because it can really add a lot of dimension and depth uh, to different elements on, on your track. Uh, so here's what we have. Let me play you the synth. I have the sauce bypassed right now. Let me play you the synth by itself. So that synth actually sounds quite good. Uh, but I want to make it a little more unique and I want to make it my own because there's probably a lot of people who have used that and I, I want it to stand out. Um, so I've put an instance of the sauce on and you'll notice that the, the interface looks a little bit different. Um, there's different colors on the knobs and, uh, and the background is gray. And the reason for this is because uh, in multiband mode, when you turn this multiband button on, um, you actually have flexibility over all of these effects on the outside of the plugin independently. So I can change the pitch and format of just the, um, the, the low frequency. So everything below 523 hertz here, of course I can change this. Um, and uh, I can change the, the reverb settings. So you have three independent reverbs. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility and creativity that you can create uh, with this alone. So let me play you the synth and about halfway through I will add the sauce so you can hear exactly what it's doing. Here we go. So you could see, um, it took what was already a great sound and made it a little more dynamic, a little more interesting. Um, we did a bit of uh, distortion. Uh, there's some pitch and format shifting happening. Uh, we added a uh, flanger just in the high and mid bands, and there's a chorus in the low band. Um, there's two different reverbs in the low band. There's a small reverb in the mid band. It's a small reverb, but in the high band, it's a large hall. Uh, algorithm. Um, and so we've done some unique uh, things there to to change some of the bands just a little bit. Um, and it's a subtle change, but it really does take what was a good sound and made it a great sound. Um, so those are four of the ways uh, that I've used uh, the sauce on this song. And you can mess with this any number of ways. Uh, we've included a number of great presets that allow you to quickly get to a new sound and something creative and interesting um, just with the click of a button here. And, uh, 
and yeah, and, and you can get some really cool sounds just by running it through the sauce and, and messing with it a little bit. So check it out and uh, show me how you're making it. So those are some of the ways that I like to use the sauce in my tracks. But I wanna hear from you guys. Tag me and share how you find your flavor with the sauce and I'll be reposting all the videos. Can't wait to see what you create.